I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we're going to start tonight with a uh, couple of hearings. And the first one is uh, Spicer uh, Marketplace. And we have a letter in our packet uh, from the attorney, Mr. Kamali. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the council. I have a letter I'm respectfully requesting to withdraw the previous tax amendment that came before this council and was recommended to be approved by the planning board based on the last public hearing and their concerns. I'd ask that be removed without prejudice. And the next item you have on your agenda is a request for a zoning, it should read map amendment and comprehensive map amendment, and it inadvertently says text amendment. Uh, we would ask that the council accept that application in order to advertise and, and refer it to the planning board of review. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the withdrawn portion of the initial text amendment by Mr. Camoli and his applicant, the Marones. And without prejudice. Without prejudice. And uh, that we proceed with the, uh, the zoning change as necessary. We'll send it to the uh, planning board for planning opinion. Board. Second. Okay. Um, All right, so we'll, uh, I think you had a little trouble with your motion there, but. Uh, just, just add to it to set a hearing date. Right? To, okay. And to set a hearing date. Okay, that's fine. And you'll second that? Second. Okay, all right, fine. Is there any discussion on the matter? No. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The Thank you, members of council. The only thing we need to do now is set that hearing date. Um, Lisa, two meetings from now, or? Yeah, it's two. It has to be advertised three times. So oh, yeah, right. It's a little different, yeah. Soon to place it on for October 17th, mm -hmm. so I believe November 7th. the 7th is probably the, the date of target. November 7th? Yes. And that would give the planning board time in between? I am guessing that that would be the case. It's already been sent to the planning board. It's oh, okay. on their agenda for Wednesday. Oh, okay, yeah. fine. All right, okay. So it's November, what'd you say? 7th. 7th, okay. All right, fine. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have a zoning ordinance amendment for property owned by, or I should say, for amendment request filed by Peter Legnos, LBI Incorporated of Groton, Connecticut. And it is the property at uh, 50 Chase Hill Road, Ashway. And they're looking for a change in their zoning. Mr. Mr. Nardone, you want to? Do you want to come right up? Yes. Okay. One of the things I just want to mention to the council before Mr. Nardone starts the presentation is that the application um, does not currently contain the signatures of the current owners of the property. And I discussed that with Mr. Nardone, and he's going to make certain that that is taken care of before the next meeting on this. I'm sorry, Ms. Kobe. I didn't get the last statement. From where? The very last thing you said. Uh, I said he's going to make sure that's taken care of before your next meeting. How much? Yes, he's the keys. Well, we just changed it to manufacturing special. It's manufacturing Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So the S is still going to stay. Right. Yes. Yep. That's Excuse me. Perhaps the map could go way over there. It might be easier for everyone to get a look at. That's good. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Madam President, members of the council. William Nardone, and I'm 
here this evening representing the applicant, Peter Legnos and LBI Inc. And I can also um, confirm the conversation that the town solicitor just um, reiterated to you that I'm here on behalf of the owner as well. They have, uh, in our haste to get the application to you, it was not signed by them, but we do have a signed purchase and sale agreement with that as a contingency, and we'll provide the owner's signature um, either um, specific from the owner or through their counsel prior to your next meeting, just as a matter of housekeeping. The application before you um, is for an amendment to the zoning map with respect to property which is currently owned by Shamrock Associates LLC. It's located at 50 Chase Hill Road and is the site of the former Imperial Wallpaper and most recently Garrity Industries uh, manufacturing companies. The application references two properties, lot 13 on plat one and lot two on plat two. The, those are the properties that are owned by Shamrock. The only uh, parcel that is the subject of our request is a portion of map one lot 13. And it's shown, outlined on the plan. It's highlighted in the uh, yellow. It's approximately 34 acres. That parcel, that the portion of that parcel, is the piece that is currently zoned manufacturing special. And we're asking that it be rezoned to manufacturing. The reason that we're here asking for that is that there is, I guess it was a little over 20 years ago when that property was designated as manufacturing special, there was a requirement that in the event of a change of use, that the applicant had to apply to the council for approval of that change of use. Well, there's no mechanism to allow an applicant to come to you and just ask for a change of use. So we're requesting a zone change which would permit our uses. The proposed use is for manufacturing, research and development, in general terms by LBI Incorporated. LBI is a company that's located currently in Groton, Connecticut. It's been in business for approximately 40 years. The president, Peter Legnos, is here with me this evening and will address the council with respect to the operation. But in, in general, it's a company that provides high level engineering and prototype development services to the Office of Naval Research. And those services include systems engineering, mechanical design, fabrication, testing, evaluation, etc., on U.S. Department of Defense projects. And Peter will expound on that a little bit more. They currently have about 28 employees in Groton and hope to increase that to approximately 40 upon uh, shortly after relocation. Now, to the zone change itself, the manufacturing special allows for only two uses at that site, and those are the two prior uses, the wallpaper business and the flashlights. The um, structure itself, which contained those uses, is approximately 170,000 square feet. As I indicated, the area of the land in question is 34 acres. We are proposing no changes to the structure other than roof repairs and cosmetic things, and no changes whatsoever to the site. We do have um, an opportunity with the remaining land, which is zoned residential, to discuss with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board, and it's our intention to do so, with respect to the potential for some public access and open space uses. And we'll leave that as a discussion point um, for future, but we did want to make the Council aware of that as one of Mr. Legnos's intentions for that property, because he will not have a use for the remaining 
60 or 70 acres, significant uh, size of, uh, of that parcel. The, the use tables that are currently in existence were not in existence at the time of the designation for manufacturing special. And that was one of the reasons for the designation, because that gave the then council some protection, if you will, or some, uh, some additional authority as to what uses could or could not occupy the property. Now that you have the expanded use table, there are a number of different uses that obviously are permitted. The protection that is afforded to the council and the town as a whole is in the fact that this property is located in the primary aquifer area under the aquifer protection overlay district. So in addition to the requirement for the property to be zoned manufacturing, there is a requirement that we apply for an aquifer protection permit specific to the uses which we would designate from your use tables. We have started that process. In fact, we have applied to the zoning board. The, uh, we requested several waivers. Those waivers have been granted. And the hearing on the aquifer protection permit has been scheduled for October 20th. So we're well along in that process as well. We've prepared a draft ordinance, which I submitted earlier this evening to the town solicitor for review. And I'd like to, I'd like to make that a, uh, a part of the record. We also appeared before the planning board on a referral basis from the council for the, uh, to receive a recommendation from the planning board to the council. They submitted a memo to the council, which was dated September 14th, in which they indicate that the board moved to recommend to the town council that the zoning of plat one lot 13 be changed from manufacturing special to manufacturing. The memo doesn't indicate, but that was a unanimous vote of the planning board. We are also in receipt of a letter from John Riendo, business development manager from the, uh, for the Rhode Island Economic Development Corporation, dated September 30, 2011. It was addressed to the town manager. This letter is to support the application of LBI Incorporated currently residing in Groton, Connecticut and seeking to purchase the existing building and property located at 50 Chase Hill Road in Ashaway. The Rhode Island Economic Development Corporation has been working with LBI to cite them in Hopkinton as part of a relocation strategy that will add new jobs and economic activity to the town of Hopkinton and the state. LBI is a research and development company providing high-level engineering and prototype development services to the Office of Naval Research. The company employs high-skilled and high-wage individuals ranging from engineers to metal and composite fabrication on U.S. Department of Defense projects. I have personally visited the company's operations in Groton, where they have been located for the past 39 years, and witnessed their methods of design, engineering, and prototype development for unmanned undersea vehicles and other special purpose buoys for the U.S. Department of Defense. I found their management protocols and practices very conducive for the health of their employees and local surroundings. Recognize that their current location is situated within the watershed 
of the city's main drinking water supply source. And to the best of my knowledge, the company has never had an environmental accident. As with similar defense-related projects, RIEDC has been involved with, we can only suggest that the Town Council perform their due diligence with a careful review of all the facts relating to LBI and their proposed operations for 50 Chase Hill Road. We are optimistic that the Council will find what we have experienced with the company, that they are owned and managed by a person who cares for his employees, his customers, and is a good steward of the environment. Present with me this evening are some witnesses and consultants that uh, may or may not need to uh, speak to you, but uh, as I said, Peter Legnos, the president of the company, who will address you shortly. Joseph Lombardo, our planning consultant, will address the uh, consistency with the compre comprehensive plan. And Michael Lenahan, the real estate appraiser, to discuss the uh, effect, if any, on adjacent properties. Also present is Pat Lafayette, who is the engineer on the project, and James Bernardo, the surveyor on the project. If there are any specific questions for those two, we can address those uh, toward the end of the presentation. The, uh, as I indicated, there are no uh, proposed changes to the site at all, but they're here to answer any questions that you may have. At this point, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. If not, I'd ask uh, Peter Legnos to come and uh, tell you a little bit about his company. Do you have any questions, for Mr. Nardone? Uh, at this time, yeah, I, I had one quick one. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Nardone, on, um, based on a letter we got from the building official Brad Ward, it looks like um, use category 305 and 627 is already permitted in manufacturing. So I don't know if yeah, that seems redundant, but. Does that have to be included, I guess, in the actually, all of the use categories that we have referenced, and we've actually included one more, are permitted in the manufacturing zone. However, each of them requires an aquifer protection permit. So if the council sees fit to rezone this property to manufacturing, the uses that we are proposing will be permitted, subject to the zoning board granting aquifer protection permits. So that's, yep. the, that's the second level of protection that the town and uh, yeah, the council he, has. The uses that he listed are already permitted in manufacturing. Okay. So he just listed them out for you. That's okay. And there is, there is one more that uh, was not included on the application. It was, I believe it was 341, which was, um, from memory, I believe it's metal fabrication. That's also a permitted use in that zone subject to an aquifer protection permit. Those uses are some of the uses in, in uh, consult with the zoning official that we determined would fit the operation of this company. The company will not occupy the entire building and at some point will be leasing some of it to other occupants and obviously whatever occupant were to go there would be first subject to Mr. Legnos's scrutiny and then subject to its own separate aquifer protection permit if it were not one of those specific uses for which we have applied. And we're, we're well aware of that, that process. Uh, Scott, you have a question? Yes, I got uh, three questions. And I just want to make sure I get this. I know at the last meeting we waived a, a tr we, we waived the traffic study. Uh, do you anticipate any uh, difference in traffic from the previous uses? I mean, trucks that go into the facility. We, we anticipate, and Mr. Legnos can address this uh, more specifically, but we anticipate less, there'll be fewer employees there, and the delivery schedule uh, with respect to components and things that uh, Peter will be having delivered will be, um, I would believe, much less intense than the delivery schedules that were in the prior uses. And he can, he can address that more specifically when he comes up. But we did have the, that discussion and represented that it would be less. Because I know that usually uh, 
believe the town has prohibited traffic on Old Hopkins Cemetery Road, so the access would have to be through Chase Hill Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was blocked off for some reason, then that would be a problem. The other, the other questions that came to mind, uh, uh, it says uh, the history of this thing is very interesting, as, as you know, because it says when this was passed many years ago, it says the change of the use each time had to come before the council. Would this change that this council would be asked to approve would once and for all take that off the table as far as your successors, whoever buys a property 10 or 15 years down the line or whenever, uh, will they have to still come to the council for uh, a zone change or is this going to be in perpetuity until the council changes? I'll answer that. I'll answer that. Um, yes, this would convert it to manufacturing so anyone who wanted to, to buy that property subsequently would be able to have any manufacturing use there. They would not have to come to you to clear it. Any permitted manufacturing use would be allowed there. But again, with one. They would, they would also, they would still have to go get the aquifer protection. Right. Sure. So there's, right. There's still safeguards in place. In place. And then uh, the other question is, and I uh, should have referred to that. Uh, but you are making a presentation to the council. The other thing that I have is uh, what the presentation to the council has been, there's no changes to the site. In the future, you plan to have the same buildings and everything. In the future, when you do any buildings, you're gonna have to go to the building inspector for permits. So you don't see any way that the council would be involved in any expansion or maybe big expansion at the site, but I will come to that. In the event that we were to expand, physically expand the structure because of the zone in which it's located, we would have to go through the development plan review process before the planning board. But as far as, as council approval, it wouldn't be required. I just thought there were relevant questions to ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Uh, anyone else from the council? No. Thank you. Thanks. Peter? Peter Legnaus, president of LBI Inc. in Groton, Connecticut. Um, hopefully coming up here. <coughs> um, <coughs> we have, um, we're an R&D and engineering firm, as Bill has mentioned. Uh, we've been in business for 40 years. We currently employ 28 people, about 22 of whom we're gonna be following us up here. And we, so we're gonna be hiring another about 17 people, from, hopefully from this area. <coughs> um, Originally, we started out designing and building boats. We have a real tie to the marine industry for a very long time, both sail power and commercial craft. A lot of them have run out of Point Judith here and Watch Hill. <clears throat> in the last 30 years, we became slowly involved, more and more involved in, in engineering and R&D for the government, uh, first through electric boat and Newport News and places like that. And uh, so we've, we've done a lot of, of that type of work. <clears throat> Uh, most of the work we do now is developed through research grants, uh, and most of them are primary grants to us through, through the Office of Naval Research. We've also done other work for NOAA, and we have developed some Arctic and Antarctic sensing platforms that, that we developed on an earlier grant. And that's the only thing that we're truly manufacturing at the site is Arctic sensing buoys. Uh, and, but some of the other products that we are producing now may be uh, bid on and built at that site as well, like underwater vehicles and that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, this, uh, we are planning to, this all goes through to make uh, about 1.1 to 1.2 million dollars improvements to the building uh, in the process of moving in and over the first year, replacing the roof on the old section, bringing it up to code, which I think is a very good thing because that will give that building a whole new lease on life and another 30 or 40 years of, of good operation at a high level. <clears throat> Let's see. We have, we propose to have our engineering department, prototyping area, electronic shop, metal shop, and composite shop in the older west side of the building. That's the one we're gonna renovate. We're gonna also put in radiant floor heat in the building, which is far more efficient. <clears throat> um, the other half of the building, we intended, we want to get a long-term lease for warehousing there. That would, because our, we have to, we have to be careful who is in the same building with us, because we have 
many concerns for the government that we just can't rent it to anybody or a lot of small tenants. It's not, not a possibility. Um, <clears throat> with regard to the, you know, we really want to use the 34 acres and the rest of the space, there's a lot of wetlands, there's a lot of access to the river from that, from to the Pawkatuck River. And I'm, you know, it, there's no reason why that shouldn't be part of <clears throat> a conservation or open space plan with the town. And I'm very happy to sit down and, and talk about that and, and how that can be, a, you know, addressed. Because it, you know, it's the best use for it. And we, you know, it's not, it's not a money thing. It just makes sense. So um, <clears throat> I guess that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions about what we do or whatever, open it up. Any, any I'm all set. I know you do. So. Barbara, um, <clears throat> I wondered if you're going to be also having, um, because you're doing the the grants, the research grants, the Arctic and Antarctic. Are you also, or do you also have a tie into URI um, because they have that oceanographic, they have the Woods Hole? Is there a tie, or is there, or are you anticipating a tie-in with you? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we actually. One of my key guys who's developing, we're, we're doing an underwater glider right now, and he's running that grant. He's an ocean engineer from URI. And, I know. Uh, I want one of those. Pardon? I want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> They're really cute. They are cute. <laughs> anyway, and uh, we have actually just sent a letter to the to the ocean engineering department. We need to recruit two or three more engineers right now, so we we need them kind of asap if we can get them. We're, we last week made a presentation to the Admiral, the, the outgoing Chief of Naval Research and the incoming Chief of Naval Research, and they've sort of accelerated our schedule a little bit. And they like things yesterday. Mm. So. I think that sounds like that would be a really good um, use of employees when you can possibly hire from URI oh, we're, and we're, locally. It, we are really happy about that because they have a great ocean engineering department. I actually traveled to Virginia Beach and, and recruited some guys from the, they were at the uh, RoboBoat competition, mm -hmm. which is an unmanned surface craft competition in June. And uh, we met one of those guys who came down to see us a couple weeks ago. And so we're, you know, it's a slow process, but uh, UConn doesn't have any of that stuff. We, are, we, have a, we have a marine science department, but it's really more biology. We're, we're more on the physical science side. So. Thank you. Maybe questions later when we sure. open it up. Thank you. I'd like to call Joe Lombardo, please. Uh, Lisa, or yeah. could you could you swear in Joe, please, Mr. Nardo, or do you want Lisa to do it? I can, Lisa. Okay. Probably official if Lisa does. Oh, Lisa does. <laughs> All right. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you were brought to you will be quickly enough to vote for you? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, name is Joseph, last name Lombardo, L O M B A R D O. Mr. Lombardo, can you just briefly state your background and qualifications for the council, please? Yes, I'm a, uh, a land use planning consultant. Uh, my background is I have a master's degree in community planning from the University of Rhode Island. Uh, I've worked uh, several uh, positions in uh, local government, including the town of Hoppington as town planner, uh, and more recently, uh, as I said, the last 10 years, uh, planning consulting work for a variety of, of clients. And you're familiar with the application before the council this evening? Yes, I am. And you're familiar with the specific site in question? Yes, I am very familiar with that site. And we've asked you to prepare a memorandum with respect to its consistency with the comprehensive plan? Yes, I did. Could you explain to the council your findings with respect to that charge, please? Okay. Good evening, members of the council. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, I'm actually quite excited to, uh, to hear of a proposal like this, uh, particularly of a building that's, that's not being uh, currently utilized. Um, so what I'm passing out um, for you is I was asked to take a look at the project uh, with respect to its compliance with a comprehensive plan. Um, I know that you've gotten a favorable recommendation from the planning board as well uh, with regards to that the fact. Uh, just a bit of the, again, to reiterate the overview, uh, this site is located on Chase Hill Road. 
and it is currently zoned manufacturing special. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, a portion of that site, of the, of the entire lot, is zoned manufacturing special, which is 34 acres. Uh, the site is really surrounded primarily by developed and undeveloped residential areas, um, but this site has been in an industrial category for quite some time, as you all know. Uh, first by Imperial Wallpaper for many years, and then the Flashlight Company. Uh, when we, first of all, I'm going to look at the when you look at the zoning considerations on page two of my memorandum, uh, this manufacturing special does allow for those previous uses, as Mr. Nardon pointed out, uh, but it does not allow for any of the other manufacturing uses, which we now have in our expanded use table here in the town of Hockington. Uh, it also lies within the Act for Protection Zone, and it's a primary zone, so certain uses require a permit from the zoning board, as you know. So just a little, a little bit more background on this manufacturing special. Uh, I think Sylvia would probably remember this uh, as well, but at the time of the adoption of the new zoning ordinance in the early 90s, uh, we went back and looked at all of the previous zone changes that the town council had granted, and a lot of them had a variety of conditions placed on them. And so this section that I'm quoting here in the bold in the middle of my memorandum is actually right out of the ordinance. But it's, it's really what it's saying is that anything that the council imposed as far as limitations, conditions, or restrictions were basically being reauthorized uh, and re-granted to all of those applicants so that when the council in, adopted the new zoning ordinance, it wasn't going to lose, nobody was going to lose what they had, nor was the town losing any of its control over those sites that they wanted to have at the time. So that's... That's the purpose of those special districts, and it's not just manufacturing, but it went across the whole zoning table. So when we look at the proposed use, there's, there's five uses that the zoning official in consultation with the owner looked at and decided these would be the activities taking place. They all are listed and they all have code numbers, uh, code 305, miscellaneous plastics, 465, general warehousing, et cetera. So you can see that uh, these are the uses that they intend to have there, but as, as, as they pointed out, they're only really using half of this building and want to be able to utilize the other half for probably one, maybe two major tenants. So again, it's, it's for the long term, it's for flexibility for the site. Uh, the, some of those uses in the manufacturing zone may also require a special use permit from the zoning board. So there's, there's adequate levels of uh, protection and review by the town and also state agencies with regards to the future. When we look at the comprehensive plan specifically, on page three I talk a little bit about the land use element. Uh, when, we, when we take a look at the land use map, the future land use map, it does indicate the site is manufacturing uh, and it's been so designated uh, in both uh, the comprehensive plan map and the zoning map. Uh, and again, when we look at that, it talks about um, a little bit of text in the plan talks about a continuation of the town's uh, manufacturing classifications. It talks about anything that has special concerns, has a special use permit, and of course the Act for Protection. There's site plan review by the planning board. So the town was very, very comfortable in keeping its existing manufacturing areas intact when it adopted the comprehensive plan, and that's what you see here on page three. Uh, I cited a land use goal on top of page four where it talks about development occurring in locations uh, based on environmental constraints and the land being consistent with the future land use map. So again, we have a manufacturing designation on the future land use map. And of course, when we talk about manufacturing, we must look at economic development. Uh, the town has, has been doing quite well in the last five or six years with uh, fostering economic development, and this is another good example. I've cited again a couple of goals and policies here. Uh, primary of that, the goal number one is expanding the town's tax base, um, new and existing light industrial into the bill into the into the town. So whenever we have that, we have investment. Uh, you heard uh, Peter just explain he's going to invest into the building and the property. Um, so we continue to add to our tax base. Uh, and lastly, uh, it talks about providing. And in, an environment here in the community that enhances the businesses to come in here 
uh, this, you can hear that from the letter from the state, the John Riando, that there's been activity uh, ongoing with the state to assist them to move to Rhode Island from Connecticut. And lastly, uh, hiring high level, high paying jobs, uh, at least another 17 employees, that's really good news for the town. Some of those people might live in town already or move to town. I think that's, that's a great, uh, again, consistency with a comprehensive plan. Uh, I also mentioned on page five those purposes of zoning, which we also must look at. Uh, does this line up with the purposes of zoning? And you can see I've cited a number of them here um, that talk about the, uh, the orderly growth and development of the town, uh, pr providing a protection for the environment. Uh, I heard about possibly having some conservation open space area there, which I think is a good idea. Um, and also uh, promotes the public health, safety, and welfare. So really, in summary, um, you know, the fact that this development is consistent with the manufacturing business use and uses that, are being, that have been outlined to you, uh, and, if, and the fact that this map amendment doesn't really alter any other manufacturing special zones in town, it doesn't affect those at all, it's just this one site, um, and the facts that all the required areas from a zoning perspective uh, met or exceeded by this development because it, it's intact and he's not proposing anything to change, but there's 34 acres there, so there's more than enough room for this prop project to uh, exist on that site. And lastly, I do find it to being uh, consistent with a comprehensive plan, primarily its future land use map, goals and policies for economic development and land use. And so really, for based on all of that information, it's my opinion, uh, that this uh, application for this map amendment, this change, is in compliance with your zoning ordinance and your comprehensive plan. And I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions council may have. No, I'm all set, uh, Joe. I've been through this with the planning board and, and I'm pretty well familiar with it. I think it's a great move. I hope hopefully everything will work out. So, uh, yeah, no, no questions. Part of time for the moment. Same here, nothing. Thank you, Joe. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michael Lenahan. Yes. <laughs> I do, yes. Michael Lenahan, L E N I H A N. Mr. Lenny, could you briefly state your background and qualifications for the council, please? Uh, certified real estate appraiser, an attorney in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, I testified at this hearing 20 some years ago when the rezone was done. Do you remember that testimony? <laughs> <laughs> I'll plead your <You're>, fifth. <laughs> you're, uh, obviously familiar with the site and the surrounding neighborhood? I've uh, pretty much appraised everything from Camoli Granite Company right up to Narragansett Electric's property and plus the uh, stuff that Mr. Grills did a couple of years ago. Uh, residential, commercial, I've done the church, I haven't done the cemetery. But everything else pretty much on that street, yes. And based upon those appraisals, do you have an opinion with respect to the effect that this zone change may have on the Neighboring properties and abutting properties. I do, and and, and I'm I always been concerned about vacant buildings. Vacant buildings concern me because you really don't know what effect you know it has. Uh, can you measure it? No, but I can I can tell you this that after you know almost 40 years of appraising property and selling property that you know. If, if people see a, a vibrant business with a commitment to wetlands, with a well-planned out thing, they, they just feel better about the whole thing, which leads to a stabilization of values. The building as it sits now, it really is, I testified 20 years ago, I don't think it has any effect on value, but I think it does have an effect on the neighborhood, and I think it has an effect on, on the overall community to, uh, in, in the way the community envisions itself so my position would be anything that's going to get that building up and running to an acceptable level to all the various um, organizations and, and uh, concerns it, it's got to be a positive thing for the area and a town and a positive thing for the neighborhood 
question, Scott? Barbara, I have a, a comment. Um, when LVI um, decides to renovate, because I'm assuming they're renovating the building so it will go up in value, um, can they also follow Hopkinton's design standards, which are under our planning board, so that the renovation can follow our present design standards? The renovation, for instance, the roof. They would have to apply for building permits for any um, work that they would do to the structure, roof replacement, and I'm certain that they would comply with the current standards. The plan, the planned renovations that uh, Peter Legnos referenced to are obviously interior renovations to uh, set up the inside of the structure for their own purposes. Usually the design standards would be if you're building a new building, but especially if he's going to renovate any of the outside portions, if he could take a look at that, I would appreciate it. Because we will. Because we do have some nice high standards <coughs> on quality of roof, quality of siding, and I'd certainly like to see that done as well. Yeah, part of the, the Would you come up to the microphone, please? Yeah, we intend to bring, bring the building up to the, the roof and the installation to the current code, and if there's any architectural standards that go with Correct. that, it only makes sense to do that. It's Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I didn't address the traffic question. I forgot to do that. But the, um, with the traffic, we don't generate as much traffic as somebody like Garrity would do. Uh, we're, we're much smaller in, in the amount of stuff. If we were manufacturing more, it would go up, but even when we manufacture a lot, it's, they're, they're small, more expensive things, so it's not like tons and tons of stuff coming in and out. Thank you for answering that question. Wait a minute, excuse me. She got me here. <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay, Lisa, how about if we swim as to like those now, but that he told the truth, not that he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> because he wasn't sworn I, I was going to I was going to ask that question. Yeah, well, actually. we're going to take care of that right now, so, I know, so that we, you understand what I'm at, Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Do you sound this way that the truth that the testimony you gave was the truth of I do. <laughs> you covered that nicely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, Tom? Um, the only thing that I ask is when you do your renovations, um, I don't know if you've uh, noticed, but in, within the last year or so, we've got a new dark sky lighting. Mm -hmm. So if you change some of the lighting fixtures, yes, yeah. um, please take note of that. Yeah, we already did look at some of the outside lights that we would go to the new type of fixtures. Okay, that's, that's very important um, yep. to us to keep that glow down to uh, Absolutely the minimum to the neighbors. Yep. Yeah, we have that same in our current location. We changed some of that to just because they wanted it. So. Thank you. Any other questions? As I said, unless there are any uh, other specific questions for us, that concludes our presentation. We obviously reserve the right to address any comments from uh, the audience, if mm -hmm. there may be, or any additional questions. We're happy to answer them. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to know if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, and just let, let us know what your name is for the record. Go ahead, sir. Charles Holland, I'm at 36 Chase Hill Road. Uh, a lot of the discussion was about the aquifer protection. It's very important uh, with the wells that are there, ours is right near the river. I didn't hear anything about uh, noise or uh, air quality with your business. I don't know enough about your business. And, or, or the subtenants you might have down the road. And we're just touching on that. You touched on traffic. And thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> with, re with regard to air quality, we will keep to below VOC standards for everything we do. We do that now for ventilation. Um, as far as noise, everything is pretty much inside. We don't have any loud outside, so it's, it, and none of it would actually emanate from the building from a noise standpoint. Um, did I get? Was there another part of have in the ten tenant? The tenant, we, the, we're really looking to work with a company that's looking for just warehousing space. They're looking for a 20-year lease 
right now that and and I don't know if they're going to come through but that type of business that would basically just be using it for storage as and as a distribution yes and not not a lot of employees I, the thing is a lot of employees bring a lot of things into a neighborhood and we're we're not going to probably ever be that big in terms of employees. We'll never be like the wallpaper company or even as big as, probably as Garrity. So it's, uh, so everything's gonna end up being inside. So I don't see much happening outside. We do have <clears throat> um, some test boats. They're, they're on trailers. It's their 11 meters long, which is about 36 feet, 35 feet. Uh, they're Navy ribs, like the Navy SEAL boats which will be coming in and out from time to time, but we will keep those probably down in uh, Watch Hill in that area, because we have an acoustic test area that we test out in Block Island Sound, and one out south of Block Island between Block Island and Montauk, so. So you wouldn't be testing them in the river? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could put one in, a little one, and see how it flows. <laughs> could you come back up to the microphone, please? In terms of the uh, water quality, uh, would there be any discharges of any type of the past uses of that uh, building down there has had leaching lagoons way back, you know, those are, um, DMs in play now and all that? You know, we, we don't have any intention for any, we, we have a stormwater discharge permit where we are now, but we don't really, it's, that's just leaching off the roof and the site, and we do tests on a regular basis. Uh, we, did, we do have a letter to the, to the state about they didn't say that there was any requirement for testing we thought that was a little strange so we we're trying to maybe we shouldn't ask too much they'll make <laughs> us do it but uh yeah there no we want to test water quality we don't really use any cleaning processes or or you know a lot of water at all so that's an ISDS there right you'll have some, a few bathrooms yes we'll have bathrooms you'll know, we'll have bathrooms and that sort of thing um I don't think what we do it really isn't much. We don't even do much washing. I mean, it's we do some sanding, we collect dust, that kind of stuff. We have machines to do that. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come up and speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Mary Lou Foley. I had um, an open-ended question, sort of. Would there be a public uh, bill of materials, a bomb, that would periodically be reviewed as ECO orders or ECOs would transpire? Oh, uh, engineering change orders? <clears throat> if we store or use different things on the site, I think we are required uh, by our permit to record that and what's stored there and the amounts, and that should be given also to the fire department. So in case there is a fire, that's to protect the firefighters and also pollution. You don't want to put a lot of water into something and spill it out into the environment, you, you know, that sort of thing. But the building is fully sprinklered, which helps in that regard. But yes, we do have to, as what we store on site changes, we're required to report it. We just did a best management practices for our aquifer permit, which allows for that and gives a list of all the stuff stored on site currently that we plan to but that will change as time goes on and it's a we have to do a monthly a weekly check and keep a log and uh, and I guess if there's any major change I'm not sure exactly how the major change works if we uh, Pat, do you know that? Yes. sir you're gonna have to sorry, sorry gotta come up yeah. <coughs> Uh, Pat Lafayette. I'm an independent consultant, but at the present time, I'm working full time for Peter <laughs> to make his move. Uh, he has both a hazardous waste and a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Um, the the stormwater plan is uh, once a year sampling and testing. The hazardous waste plan is uh, OSHA managed, uh, OSHA regulated. Uh, he meets all the requirements of the government. All the, the hazardous materials are stored in properly constructed rooms or cabinets for small amounts that are at a work location. Mm -hmm. So he's under the guidance of the government. Okay. Thank you. Shouldn't he be sworn if he's working for Mr. Oh, it's good. Everything idea. I just said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think for procedural, because when somebody comes before the council for expert witness or they're working with somebody, right. it's. Uh, sure. Please. 
Um, you said that the testimony you just gave and you know, the testimony you might give, what's the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak? Yes. Hi, my name is Richard Mann. I'm a property owner on the side of this property. It's uh, I wrote down a couple of things, and some of them were already answered with the, the testimony from the other people. But uh, I'll read what I have just by. To keep the property zone special use, this would allow LBI and their tenants to be able to use the property as their intended use provided it is in concurrence with the town's outlined and intended master plan. I spoke with Peter and he sounded very good with what he said. We had an appointment to meet, which he did not keep, perhaps an oversight on his part. Chase Hill Road is one of the few beautiful, untouched, natural scenic areas along the Pocketuck River that our townspeople and visitors take great pride in living in and also driving through this area. I would really hate to see it turn into a manufacturing zone and look like you know, it, it's uh, like the areas LBI's in now and, and Charbert's and other areas. Over the last 10 years, Garrity had very few employees and that property has always been quiet and neat. The town has special use regulations in their books now for such situations. Let's use them. Turning this area into manufacturing and testing creates many unknown things that can grow out of control if we are not very careful, especially fiberglass, the extremely harmful to its workers, air, soil, and water. The sewer system is not designed to handle any such byproducts that leaches into the earth just over the wetlands. There's always been a very neat and quiet atmosphere on that property. We should not allow outside storage of any kind the parking lot lights should be like Robello's, which the town really liked. The property Ray Quinlan built is a wonderful setup. It does not interfere with anyone, and the town did not give in to any concessions. LBI and the town council feel there is no need for a traffic study. I was told there was one done 10 years ago, and one was done, and the outcome of it was to put a light at the intersection of Chase Hill and Route 3, to cut the guardrail back and to widen the swing where there have been numerous accidents there. Tractor trailers cannot safely make a right-hand turn. Ten years ago, I used to live on Route 3 across from Crandall's Field. I rollerbladed down that road daily. There's way too much traffic to even consider that now. So we really need to have a current traffic study. In closing, all I'm asking is that LBI and their tenants who want to use this property to just satisfy the town and its people that we will ensure to protect and preserve it as the town has always stressed it's important to the people of Hopkinton. Thank you. Thanks. Would you like to give that to the clerk for the record, or do you want sure. to keep that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yes. There were some good points brought out. I think we were going with the hazardous materials. Um, there were some good points brought out with the hazardous materials uh, some uh, people spoke. With the materials that you store on site to uh, build your products and you produce your, do your manufacturing, what, what would they present in terms of, uh, in the case of a fire, hazardous materials? Um, similar has plans that you guys talked about. Um, in other communities such as Quonset, well, I'll just throw that out as a big one. They have the full-time fire department and they have a response and the whole plan. Here, it's volunteer. Would there be something uh, there that would cause a problem with the volunteer nature of it or there would really be nothing? Just touching that whole. Sure. We um, are proposing, this is part of the aquifer protection, that the old oil, there's an oil tank containment building which contains 20,000 gallons. And we are going to convert that so most of all the flammable, we have both mostly organic chemicals, some resin, solvents, and that sort of thing. That's the bulk of what we have. They are, some of them are flammable, some are not. <coughs> uh, and that spill containment, I don't think, I think the amount we have is so far below the containment of that building. And it's not connected to the building. If there was a fire in that thing, 
I think you would contain it and let it burn. I don't think you would do anything about it. And that's what, I am a fire commissioner in Pequannock Ridge in Groton, which is the largest district in, Gro in Groton. And, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with this sort of these procedures. So it's important that they, the firefighters have that information so they can respond to it appropriately. One other correction, uh, Pat said that we, uh, hazardous waste, we, don't, we are not a hazardous waste generator. We have hazardous material, which would be flammable and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's, you know, basically, basically it. And, uh, by the way, I was there from 10 to 1. I said, I'd be there from 10 to 12. You didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anyone else who would like to come up? Yes, sir. And then you after. Hi, my name is Stephen Mack. I live at 79 Chase Hill Road. I have known Peter Legnos for 35 years. I like him. I've been to his company, checked it out, but not for this purpose. I didn't see any problem with that fitting into this uh, format. Uh, so I essentially, being within earshot of where Peter is, I'm at the top of Chase Hill Road, and if you drop a bottle loudly there, I will hear it in my bedroom window, especially if you do it at 5 a.m. Um, I don't have any issues with Peter being there. Uh, or his business being there. But I do have some issues. Um, and some of them, uh, my essential issue uh, has to do with the change in zoning and how that relates to uh, the town, as I understand it, not being able to regulate to a degree once it's moved into a manufacturing zone. Am I right so far? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Follow your, your okay. Mm -hmm. What's important is that the that what's important starting on the larger scale is the town of Hopkinton. The town of Hopkinton, I have been enormously proud, has what they have done at Route 95 and Route 3 to me is just wonderful, especially out in the countryside where we live, where people haven't many people that live in our area haven't seen uh, sprawl and what happens and haven't been familiar yet. They've had the wisdom to limit the kinds of industries that came in as low impact industries and done a, a spectacular job against, I'm sure, a lot of pressure from people that bought land thinking that they could do otherwise and have really, as a town, I think that this town's really held its own and I'm happy and proud for that. The site on Chase Hill Road is in the town of Hockington. It is in a residential area. And while the consultant said it's surrounded by undeveloped land, that is true for a distance, but not farther than your shot. So it really is a residential area with at what at one time was a special use property. Um, my feeling is that the future of the site uh, in the long term is what's paramount. So uh, Peter, who I hope does brilliantly and expands enormously, may, for reasons, grow out of that site. And if so, and if that's his advantage, hopefully quickly. And then, if you make a zoning change, the next person that addresses that site is going to have a zoning situation, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you will not have control over, because they'll be able to do uh, within the permitted area in the aquifer scenario anything they want to do so this meeting within reason will not happen again and I think that that's that's a major mistake on the part of the town unless I'm misunderstanding this I'm not studies up studied up as much as I should be I, I say that but I think that that's a major issue that is my major issue uh, with the with this whole scenario I think that the town needs to be able to keep control of these sites uh, in the town to retain the character of the town. Uh, the simple things that run off of that are um, the traffic consideration is verbal, it's not written. And things that are verbal are verbal, they take place in a meeting, but they are, we're not locked into those things. Peter knows pretty much what his traffic's gonna be, but he doesn't know for a fact who his tenant's going to be. He has a tenant he wishes to work with, that he likes, that I think, uh, according to him, works with the kind of security clearances that they have to do what they do. But who knows what that person will do? And who knows what the next person will do? So in the long run, 
what will the eventual traffic be? Nobody knows. So I think it's incumbent upon the town to take the unknowns into consideration and address those issues now, not just for the sake of the town and the residents of Chase Hill Road, but for the sake of Peter, who when he owns that building, has will have a space that he can move in and he needs to know, I think, before he purchases that building, where his leeways are. And we don't, the last thing we want to have happen is for something to have happened that we don't like, but now we can't do anything about it. Now it's an issue. So I think it's a really critical issue. It was brought up a bit earlier that with regard to the tenants, that the aquifer, uh, aquifer permit would somehow regulate that, but it won't. The aquifer permit relates solely to protecting the aquifer, aquifers. It doesn't have to do with traffic or noise or anything else. Now, Peter's in charge right now, but that's now. So I really think that this is something that we should think about. Uh, I think that if it requires a little bit more time on the town's part to review this and to see what we can do, in a, if you agree with me, uh, to customize or to review the idea of keeping s control of the site so it doesn't turn into something unlike what you've already done for the town, I think it would very much be uh, be worth that time and that's my thinking thank you thank you i wanted to point out that you brought up the aquifer protection permit um there are actually a couple there back when back when this prop this particular site ended up becoming a manufacturing special in the 80s 88 sometime in the 80s I was there. we didn't okay we didn't have um we didn't have the zoning we didn't have the district use table we didn't have um, zoning that we have now, we didn't have aquifer protection, we didn't have primary zones, secondary zones, we didn't have well, welfare, I mean wellhead protection, we didn't have any of those things. So back then councils really did need to, in some instances, put special circumstances on property. <coughs> As it turned out, it was called MS, Manufacturing Special, but there wasn't really anything. All it was is if anything changes, you're going to have to go to a council. So that was basically what the use, what, what, what it was. Um, but since then, thing, a lot of things have changed. And while one of them is a thing where the town, do, I disagree, the town does have control and has control, as you mentioned, the aquifer protection ordinance, but it also has another um, way to control it, and that's the planning board. Especially so anybody, the planning board, anybody who, who is going to, let's suppose something happens and, like you said, his business ex explodes and he needs to move to another site, someone else is going to come in. We don't know who that is. We do know that whoever they are will have to go to the planning board, whoever they are will have to go to the zoning board. So we do have some control, but we, they don't have to come to the council anymore. So you're right on that. Um, anything also? Well, some of those have special uh, use, use permits, permits too. Right. If you go through the zoning ordinance, even though, they, even though it's a manufacturing zone, there are still areas that require a special use permit in order to bring that into a manufacturing zone. Everything is not just Cot blanche. Uh, so there are still um, protections within the zoning ordinance itself. If you happen to look at those. Uh, is there, would you like to come up again? Please. So then may I ask, do you think that this zoning change and this use conforms with the regulations that you have on the other uh, recently installed uh, low impact manufacturing businesses that you have up here on uh, Route 3. Is that the question again? Does, the, does, this, does this zoning change mm -hmm. for this particular building, is it parallel with the zoning changes that are in effect for the structures that are up on Route 3 near Route 95? There is uh, a structure with uh, a berm and pine trees on the top. Mm -hmm. These low impact, is this the exact same thing or is it broader, smaller? What, how would you characterize that? Everyone's, uh, I, the I, they're, they're, they're the same. The manufacturing different. zone is exactly. It's the as, same zoning. Yes, the manufacturing zoning is identical. So it's all, all the same as what okay. you see up here as what it would be down there. So then, oh, go ahead. Barbara. I was going to say, actually, um, I think LBI is coming in much smaller mm -hmm. because um, even at high-tech profiles, we have Spicer gas. We have a mm -hmm. huge gas tank there, which is very hazardous. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually have 
um, other things they've done that have been even more intense mm -hmm. than LBI. As a matter of fact, they're coming in really under, I think, under the radar. They're coming in really with soft things. Uh, your point that you don't know what's going to come in after that, um, even with high tech, when they came in with some bigger problem areas, like a, a gas company is problematic. Um, the planning board was able to handle that very well, make sure it was contained, um, make sure the aquifer permits worked. So I think that we do have those um, protections in place that weren't there before, yeah. not to mention we have um, active citizens who get very fussy <laughs> when something comes in that shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. uh, which we have seen in any number of ways in Hopkinton, and have prevented many things that other people have wanted. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, our motto is still in good shape. Then a last point, I think, has to do with the traffic. Uh, the traffic scenario, which is not really traffic, let me say the, the safety factor. When you're coming down Chase Hill Road and come into Route 3, the circum there's a circumstance there, which this is broader than just L LBJ. But as you come up to the rise there, you do not have line of sight to the left. Yeah. Now, I had the director of the uh, highway department, what is that, the Public Works, Public Works uh, quite a few years ago came down through some efforts that I made to come and look at the site with an entourage of people that he works with to talk about that. And they made some changes there, but not adequate. It's very dangerous. Now, when you look to the left, it is the under branches to the left, and this would affect people as central as Peter himself trying to get out of there, or any one of us. When you look to the left, if somebody's rocketing down the road there, as I just missed the end of my days with a teenager or a year or two older, quite a few years ago by about that much, cranking along around 75 or 80, you can't see them coming in time. The lower branches are at issue, not the trees. When I talked to the, uh, to the fellows from the state, he said, oh my God, because he'd been doing it for a while, and I'm sure that was the state of things with him. He said, oh my God, the, 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 the environmentalists, won't go, they'll go crazy because it's a flyway. Okay. So, but I think the lower branches are an issue, and I think that that's an important issue. Uh, if he has employees, it increases the traffic access. It's an important issue for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that one way or another needs to be addressed. I realize it isn't entirely for this by any means, but it's important. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that Rick brings up is absolutely true. Uh, after 35 years on Chase Hill Road, I have seen that uh, guardrail to the right get crumpled up so many times and they come back and replace it and then they cut it back a few stanchions and then they come back and replace it and it's a really lousy turn. Now to fix it, I think, the only thing you can do is raise the plane of Chase Hill Road as you approach it, which is a really big job. And then you're dropping off into Camoles and I don't know what to do. But one way or another, if we're going to have an active business there again with tractor trailer trucks, no matter how expensive the contents are, uh, there's tractor trailer trucks. It's just the way things get moved. I think it's something that needs to be addressed. And it's a pain in the neck because it isn't easy uh, for anybody. So I, do you have, just, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask if you have any thoughts on that. I, maybe I don't, I'm not allowed to ask things like that. No, but sounds, I mean, how do we address that? Sounds to me it's something that we can give to Bill McGarry and Public Works can take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, Especially it's, it's, it's tough. Especially the lower branches, we may not be able to redesign the road, but we certainly might be able to cut some of the They branches. belong to Westerly. Oh, great. Yeah, it's, I'm a, sure state, we can it's a state it. issue and it's another town, but it's still a problem. They're friendly. Yes, they are friendly. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. And if we Thank pay you. for the work, they might actually. Right. Okay. Right. Thanks so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I met the gentleman back there, and either one the of you can go up. Oh, oh, I think you guys are related, huh? <laughs> John Donahue, uh, 38 Chase Hill Road. Um, uh, my parents and I are, are your uh, budding property owners to the west, okay? Sure. Probably your co closest neighbors. Um, no one asked this question. Um, what will the hours of operation be? And um, I guess. 
if this is granted um, and there is an issue, how accessible will you be to your neighbors? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our standard hours of operation are basically 8 to 4.30, although we often start at 7 and work a little bit later. Uh, so we, we might work, you know, if we have a big rush, we might work till 8 o'clock at night or 7.30 or something like that. We're basically a daytime operation. And I will be working on site there, and I'm accessible. I'll give you my cell phone. You can call me anytime. It's that kind of person. So, yeah, it's just easier to talk than it is to avoid people. I mean, they're, they're really, you know, and I, I'd like to work on that corner there at room <laughs> three, too. I, I volunteer for that. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. John Donahue, 38 Chase Hill Road. I'd just like to, uh, if you could answer your question, and you talked about the open space and the public access to that. Uh, property. I don't want you. I don't understand what you actually mean about that. Can I walk over there and point? The, the, uh, the building building is here, and this area is the manufacturing zone, manufacturing special zone that we are asking to be changed. And this area is all residential along the river here. And there's a great deal of wetlands on here. There's some possibly usable land here, but not a lot of it. So I would think that access to the river and anywhere along here, we can never really know, we can't really develop or use it in any way. So it really ought to be used for public access. And there, I, my initial thoughts, but I'm not an expert, I haven't really done it this deeply, but the, the, there's a right of way from here against it, here against the electric right away. It could get back there. there could be parking area or something down to here. Put it into the community. It's beautiful. I've lived here all my life and that not against the not against the way goes to the river. Right. And they had it open at one time for years and the people go down there and use it, mm -hmm. but all they do is make garbage and make a down there and they finally mm -hmm. locked it off. They, oh really? Well I think that's that the problem for if we, if there was an area where there was parking for that and otherwise that we could put some barrels and work. You know, you've probably been down there. Many a times. They make a mess down there. We should have company. Nope. Nope. I've seen it over the years. Yeah, now. It goes on. I understand. Well, I picked up after a lot of but this, it, it, it's, you know, all this is really nice long. Uh, really like you that way. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I guess, but if no one can see it or use it, yeah. it's going to make a lot of sense. I don't know, we've got to figure out a way, right? Yeah, Maybe the land, land trust would be a good candidate. Land yeah. trust or the WPA, yeah. the WPWA, yeah. because they actually build those, build those parking areas and the um, putting in the canoes. And if they could also then take care of it, because it would be through the Land Trust Conservation and the Wood River Pocketuck um, Watershed Association. Uh, but you're right, it needs to have someone who oversees it. It's not just a dead parking area. I mean, there's something that, hmm. isn't there something that doesn't require maintenance? <laughs> 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 Um, Would you come up to the microphone, please? Sure. Um, I walk around that mill all the time now because it's nothing there. And I see, uh, as you probably have, they've left a gas grill, they've left furniture, some landscapers has dumped whatever. And I get very aggravated about stuff on Chase Hill. <laughs> Um, and I think wherever you have people who have public access like that, they don't, they don't live there, so they don't care. Yeah. Well, and it, it's well. very aggravating to me to see a long time right. sell all the garbage. I mean, I mm -hmm. pick it up all the time. <laughs> but obviously, you know, it just is a concern that if, if you don't have any control over that, Excuse me, ma'am. And you're Mrs. Mann, I assume. No, oh, excuse me. I mean, Mrs. Donahue. Excuse me. Okay. 
for the record, Mrs. Donahue. <coughs> yes, sir. Those, those are very hard questions to answer. Right. Um, but uh, I think that if there were a land trust that somebody who was involved with maintaining it as part of the whole effort, that would be probably useful and, and would stand a chance of success. Yes, sir, you want to come back up? Hi, I had two issues. It's uh, this lady mentioned about the gas tank out the Spicer. I was at that meeting and Spicer and the lawyers and all that were saying how safe it was. And the council was saying it's how hazardous it is. And I came up and I spoke because my mom's house blew up with a small gas tank and she died. So I was like, I couldn't believe that Spicer and their people let us all believe it's not harmful, yet we know it is. That's what I'm saying. Steve said it very well, how we just can't blow this out of proportion. And I own all that land on the other side of Narragansett Way, except for two acres. And I've been working with Narragansett Electric to get control of that road. And, and then I came to the town to build one other lot there. And there's a big deed construency where that road is deeded to the people that live there. And then so LBI does not have access to go down there and to use it as a public parking place where people can just go leave grills and party and all that stuff. It's, that would be a detriment to all my property down there. And, it's, um, and, and that's why to have them have his 38 employees or 17 more and to, if he needs 5,000 feet to do fiberglass work and resin work, I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with this turning into, you know, it's like we're just going to do this, but once you open the door into manufacturing, it's, it's going to just get blown out of proportion. And I own businesses in North Kingston. And then Home Depot tried building, and it's like then Walmart was able to, then Staples is there, and then all these buildings went up. My taxes never went down. It's, so having a tenant coming in from Groton could be a great thing, but I'm sure you don't want me to come here and say, I want to develop my 80 acres because I have 500 tenants out from Norwich that want low-income housing. It would take away from what Hopkinton's all about. And I pay big taxes in Hopkinton to keep it rural. In Chase Hill Road, you know, all those stone walls and the river, mm -hmm. do we really want a mill there? You know, it's like, please consider what you want to grant. Thank you. That's all I'm asking. Is there, um, you would like to come up? Yeah, if I could please, just add please. one point of clarification. Brad Ward, building and zoning official, town of Hopkinton. I want everyone to know that this zone change is not going to be just manufacturing. Right now, it is manufacturing special. It's going from manufacturing special to manufacturing. And the difference between those two is that in, 19, in November 1st, 1988, the zone change went from RFR 80 to manufacturing special. The special portion of the manufacturing zone is four conditions. Those four conditions are, number one, if the use as it currently exists is discontinued, or if a new owner wishes to change the use from its current use to another, a change of use permit will be required from the council. This mechanism can't be accomplished. There are no provisions installed by the council to obtain a change of use permit. So it's archaic. Number two, the planning board shall have final approval of any plans for the proposed expansion of a building or parking area. As Mr. Nardone specified earlier, this is a requirement of development plan review for any commercial zoning district or manufacturing. Number three, the CNA should notify the town council if any new classes of chemicals, dyes, or processes are to be introduced or approved that the waste treatment will be inadequate not to cause pollution. This aspect is scrutinized in-depthly at Aquifer Protection. 
Number four, the CNA will provide in consultation with the town solicitor a conservation easement or similar mechanism for ensuring that no development will occur within 300 feet of the entire property line bordering the river as shown on that certain map. Mr. Langos wants to provide and work with the town to provide open space or what's ever required of all that land that wasn't in, in uh, contesting as far as item number four went. Therefore, the only thing that this is doing is removing four archaic conditions. He is still entitled, once he meets these conditions, to have any permitted use as it occurs down at high tech and all the other new things that you mentioned, sir. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. <laughs> okay. So that's essentially all that this is doing. It's just removing four conditions that no longer are applicable and are highly scrutinized by other town boards and other public hearings within uh, the town. Can I ask you a question? One, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Um, Scott, you had a question? Yeah, I have a question for Mr. Wood. Oh, oh, please, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean disappear, <laughs> but thank you. Hi. Uh, obviously, these, uh, you're always interested when you're on the council to set presidents and, and to be fair to all applicants and uh, try to cover all the bases. Uh, two things, uh, I remember that property, and I've lived in town all my life, that was Warner Brothers in the 60s, and uh, so that's been around at least since the 1960s. Uh, I know there's a sentiment in town about having dark skies, about lighting. Do you see any concern about uh, that being an issue at that site? And the other thing I would ask you is, do you think there's anything that we should have in writing? Is there any omissions in the ordinances that we should put in writing to protect the interests of the town in your professional opinion about building and zoning official? Uh, um, with relation to the dark sky ordinance, Mr. Legnos has already indicated here under oath that he uh, will, as far as any lighting replacement goes, be uh, in compliance with our dark sky lighting. So I have to take him at his word there and I'm sure that he will uh, follow that, uh, those constraints. Uh, as far as putting any additional concerns in writing, uh, that's really not a, a question for me. It's, uh, I hate to say it, it's more a question for, for Ms. Buckley back there. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, I really wouldn't know how to uh, put the, the appropriate limitations on to be uh, in compliance with the Well, I I'll apologize for putting you into that position of answering that question, but at the same time, you are the one that does the enforcement, so you do have, uh, you're the other end, the, the solicitor gives us advice, but also the zoning and building official does the actual enforcement, so your perspective is uh, welcomed by this councilman. Thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, there will be no problems with enforcement issues on uh, LBI. I have visited their site as well, and uh, I believe that they'll be fully compliant with all aquifer protection permits and, and uh, a very good steward of the environment from what I observed in their operation down uh, in New London. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Walker. Uh Was there anyone else, is there anyone who hasn't spoken that would like to speak? Is there anyone who wants to come back up? Yes, sir. I know this is a bit off the subject, but we've gotten off on the subject of electric right-of-way road and possibly a public access development down there. Uh, over the last 35 years, then probably long before I came to this area, that road has been an unspoken designated dumping zone. And everybody who lives around here knows that. It's couches, it's uh, people that are uh, hunting deer leave deer carcasses along the road that they pull out. That's, that's a fact of life. Beds, anything. And I've actually caught a couple of people. I dug and spent a, an hour digging through somebody's garbage one day on Chase Hill Road <laughs> and found their address in you. there on their child's homework. And so I had to come and clean it up, and it's it's not much fun. So I think it's I think that's to find an entity that's going to keep people from doing that and put access down there in a place that's very unmonitored, mm -hmm. great place for parking, drinking beer. I think that's what's going on down there, that kind of stuff. Uh, down in the area, people put canoes in. It's been really tough. So I, for my own part, 
would be uh, uh, not opposed to the idea in another area, but in that particular area, I think it's I think it's inadvisable, and it would be better, uh, as Rick says, to, to just keep it as low key as to some I don't know to address, unfortunately, uh, less people going down there rather than more. Just throwing in my two cents. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, thank you very much. I think the attorney Oh, run back up. I like to be last. Good. Um, with respect to the, the comments tonight from the, uh, the general public and abutters, I think that uh, Peter has indicated his willingness to be available and address the concerns, and based upon my experience with him, none of you should doubt that. Uh, none of you should doubt that that Peter will be available, he'll address your concerns, and he will give you his cell phone number. He said he would. <laughs> um, as to the, the issue of open space, I didn't want to leave, with the, leave anyone with the impression that we were just going to do that, to just create something, create some public access. Uh, we don't have any rights to use that Narragansett way any more than anyone else does. We wouldn't presume that. And we certainly wouldn't create um, an area to access that, uh, to make that river accessible to the public unless it was in concert with either your land trust or the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board. So we're, we, we've talked about the possibility of offering some or all of the remaining land for that type of purpose, but it's not in our firm plan. And again, we would not do that without total cooperation, consultation, and partnership with the town and the appropriate agencies. So I think the, uh, to allay that concern that it's going to be a free-for-all down there, please don't, don't leave with that impression. It, it won't happen. I think the, um, in summary, in the, the expert testimony that you've heard this evening indicates that uh, a couple of things that are germane to the rezone. One, that the changing of the zone from manufacturing special to manufacturing will not have an adverse effect on the values of the surrounding properties. The, um, the proposal is consistent with and in compliance with your comprehensive plan and the future land use maps. The Rhode Island Economic Development Corporation, I think it's safe to say, is excited about this possibility. And I believe that the town of Hopkinton uh, should be as well, and I think, I think that you are. This corporation will provide high quality, high paying jobs, and again, I think it's, uh, it's a feather in the, in the cap of Hoppington to be a participant in this. LBI, despite the fact that they have received all, if not all of, most if not all of the required approvals to expand where they are, have chosen to make Hopkinton the site of their next phase of expansion and success. And we would ask the council to act favorably on that application and grant the rezone. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there a motion? Motion Let to close the hearing and set a date for a decision. Second. Can I just ask you that to close the hearing subject to Mr. Nardone's providing of the owner's Okay. A motion to close. Uh, make yes, and that will be provided the, probably by week's end. I make a motion to close the hearing subject to Mr. Narnone's signatures of the owners. Second. And set a date for a decision. All right, there's been a motion and a second by Tom. Um, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank date. you. Now, a date. Your next. I won't be here. Can you get all the yeah, we'll more time? Here. Okay. You'll have to go to the first meeting in November. That's the seventh, which we have okay. the Spicer Marketplace on. Mm -hmm. And you will also have your renewals for victualing and That's liquor continue. license, but those typically don't. Mm -hmm. We we've got to get this. You know, okay. we've got to take care of our business. Yeah. Seven. Okay. All 
right, November 7th? That was that, that getting a little late for you? That's, uh, I'm out of the state that week. Well, it's for the council to make a decision that night, so, um, so, uh, there's no more discussion from I mean, the public. It's yeah, I mean, from it, the council. right, the hearing's closed, so if you're not there, you just don't get to hear what our decision is. <laughs> he'll give you his be, cell phone. There's going to be a back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> so the, only, the only other meeting is this. That's the only other meeting after the 17th, you said? Yes. It's the first meeting after the it's 17th. The, it, right, yeah. 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 All right. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for, for attending tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll have a couple of minute recess while, the, uh, while everyone leaves. Thank you. <laughs> Tom was trying to get in there to make that uh, motion for the hearing so you can continue. So, I didn't continue. I know you didn't. I know you didn't, but you have to have Oh, you were, you were. You were have to have it. I'm doing it when, I do it when there's lots of, if there's lots of problems. This is not lots of problems. Yeah, this is great. By the way, just so you know the mic is still on. No, I don't. Hey. That was a funny one. He ran into a little bit like that. Right in here. I'm just going to realize that it's so much more protection of now than it was in that zone. I'm only going to give them like two more minutes and then I'm going to tell them to get out. We're going to need you to like leave because we got our council meeting. Unless finish. you want to stay. I mean, you can talk outside. <laughs> this is Donnie Hugh. Good seeing you again. See you soon. You all right? Oh my goodness. Stress. Just one of those I thought that was a stress thing. No. Oh no, that's the star. Can't be cheap. Scott. Huh, where is he? Carolina. Yeah, he must drink a lot of water before he gets in here. <laughs> there he comes. Come on, Scott. They're just not going to leave. Please, we've got to finish our meeting. <laughs> It's nice to, oh, it's raining out. That's why they don't want to go out. Oh, yeah, it's pouring out. <laughs> I think it's still raining. Okay. All right. Our five minutes are up. All right, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. You're going to pull September 6th. Okay. September 6th? Mm hmm Yeah, I have a problem with that one. Okay, is there anything else to pull? No. A uh, motion to approve town council meeting minutes of September 19th, 2011, set October 17th, 2011 as a hearing date for a commercial haulers license filed by Joseph Denagro for Patriot Disposal Company, except the following reports, tax collector, which includes adjustments. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, September 6 minutes. Page two. Page two. Page two. Um, in favor and opposed yes. are reversed. Right. <coughs> I'm going to, uh, I'd like to have these uh, not voted on tonight because uh, there's a statement in there I suggested that be told the northern part of, of the state and I want to make sure, listening to the tape, whether I said that correctly. I think oh, I wait said. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So what page are you on? You have to uh, give us a page, Scott. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Please do it. Page nine. Is it page nine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Page nine. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I, I'd rather uh, we not vote on them because I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, it says here, he suggests the toll booths be placed further north because of higher population, more vehicle traffic. He said we'd like the town council manager and our legislative prize of the situation. Uh, I just want to check exactly what I said. I did say that it'd be probably better in the north, but I don't think I endorse that idea. I just said it would seem logical. Oh, wow. I just like to make sure that I, oh, I'm wow. quoted exactly. suggested toll booths be placed in another location. Um, because he said further north. Um, how about just, he suggested toll booths be placed north further north. Northern state. Yeah, but I don't know if I said that. I suggested it would make more sense, but I don't know if I actually Well, I guess, Scott, there. the best thing to do is to we're listen to, to tape. that tape and find out what you did yeah. say. So yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put those for the next meeting. Okay. That's fine. And I, and I might be wrong on that because oh, a lot right. of times you, you can can't remember everything you say, literally, you know? But I don't want to be hung for uh, saying that I support tolls in the northern part of the state. You know, <laughs> I didn't exactly I think that's what you it. said. Well, no, there's <laughs> not anything wrong with that either. No, and no, I actually think I said part of it's that. It's better than the southern part. I said there are and I might have said traffic. that, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, on to our first public forum. But uh, we've lost our public. Did we uh, vote? Well, there's we nothing vote. to We did vote. We yeah, voted on the consent agenda. Okay, public. Hmm. Anyway. Um, wow, public left. Man. No public. Our newest American <laughs> sitting over there. <laughs> okay. Um, and the town manager, uh, we, it was just on there just in case, and um, he will give us a report at our next meeting, no doubt. Uh, old business, the 2011 Community Development Block Grant. All I wanted to do was announce that we are going to receive the following Crandall House forty thousand dollars warm employment ninety five hundred welcome house for operating is twenty five hundred housing information program fifteen hundred Washington County CDC for four thousand community land trust housing land trust is two thousand and of course administration is, is five thousand what's that total up to uh, sixty four thousand five hundred Oh, the 225,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it fluctuates. It, it really it just, just keeps fluctuate. going down. Yeah. Well, next year it'll, it'll, you'll see repair on here because we'll, if we use up things, then you get more. So right. anyway, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, new business. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Bill. It's the TIP program. Thank you. Uh, with respect to this uh, agenda item, um, <clears throat> The uh, council president uh, placed this on the agenda at my request. And uh, basically, um, I would respectfully request that the council consider scheduling a public hearing uh, for October 17th uh, to consider the town's uh, <clears throat> transportation improvement program, uh, state planning um, uh, in, in Providence, Department of Administration, requires that a public hearing be held before they'll accept any applications uh, from cities and towns throughout the state. Uh, this morning I attended an orientation session in Providence at the Department of Administration with respect to the TIPS program. Uh, they had two today, uh, one this morning and one this evening. And it was for city and town representatives as to how they develop their individual uh, um, transportation improvement programs on a municipal level. Uh, very basically, the uh, last, they do it every four years, and it's a three-year program. From 2009 to 2012, uh, the average was approximately uh, $210 million per year. Uh, now it's going to be decreased by 24% to an average of $160 million per year. There are some major projects uh, that are already in the pipeline. And out of that $160 million, uh, the Sakonet River Bridge, which in itself is about $80 million, the Providence Viaduct, uh, which is opposite the mall, yeah. the, the Pawtucket River Bridge uh, between, uh, right as the exit to go off to Memorial Hospital, uh, certainly those, just those three projects themselves uh, are going to consume a considerable amount of money. And that's not even including the debt service that goes along with it. So we don't anticipate... 
We don't need the toll booths then. <laughs> so we don't anticipate um, a lot of money coming our way. However, we really need to be prepared. We have uh, three projects from 2009 to 2012. One has been completed, and that's Bridge Street, uh, the one they've been working on for two or three years. And there are uh, two others uh, that we plan to continue. Um, <clears throat> what we'd like to do is sit down with uh, uh, the town planner and um, also with the DPW director and fill out the paperwork for the state roads that we feel uh, in town, that we feel uh, are uh, those deserving of uh, repair and, and uh, receiving federal funds. And then to schedule a public hearing and bring that before the council, and if they wish to uh, uh, add some more or delete some or to amend them, and also to get some public input. One of the problems, as always, is time constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, today was the day of the orientation session. All applications are due by Friday, October 28th, <laughs> at statewide planning. Oh, boy. So <clears throat> we have to move in a hurry. And because they do require a public hearing, uh, we would respectfully request that we schedule one now for the 17th. And between now and then, we can put together a certain proposals for applications god bless you uh, for the different roads in town and then discuss them uh, at the public hearing on the 17th and that's our request at this point okay. yeah, can I that's fine um go ahead scott hello and then we'll just uh, swing by well mm -hmm. i will just say two things and i don't because obviously you've got to set priorities number one for many years, I've been concerned about the Laurel Street, which is technically a state road. Oh, wait a minute. If we're going to get into what it is we need to do, we should do that at the hearing. Right. Yes. We, mm -hmm. we, don't, we, we shouldn't really get into I that now. We should do it at the hearing. You just got to, like, a general. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to get into specific projects, because we'll do that on the 17th. This, I would then have a general statement. Uh, some of the state roads that are particularly uh, needed work for quite a few years. I'm also concerned about some drainage issues, but I'll stop by and talk to you. Tom? Bill, this is strictly for state roads, not for local, right? Yes. Okay. Barbara? Um, when we're discussing the transportation improvement program, um, I know we're not discussing specific roads, but we are having come back up through planning is the Potter Hill Mill, which is westerly, and we own all the roads going there. Two of them belong to us, and one belongs to the state. And if they're going to renovate Potter Hill, Westerly needs to work with us to take care of Laurel, which is a state road. It's an ongoing issue, and it's going to be coming up again. I just wanted to let you know that. I know Die Hill is very important, too. Well, that's, that's, town. that's, that's a town road. I know. Oh, well, uh, darn. Frank? Yeah. Uh, hi, Bill. Um, yes. You mentioned the three projects from 2009 to 2012. You said yes. Bridge Street was one of them. What were the other two? <coughs> Bridge Street's done, that's all set, looks great. Yeah, I've got them here. Just curious. Uh, there are three, project, uh, three projects. The first one is the Wood River Bridge number 261. Uh, and I checked with uh, DPW, who checked with the uh, <clears throat> Hope Valley State Garage, and basically that's the bridge by the chemical company on Route 91, the abandoned chemical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Charmin. Charmin. Okay. Charmin. That's that bridge there. Okay. And, the current status uh, is it's in design at a 90% rate, and it's non-prioritized by the state. The funding for that is uh, $210,000. The second uh, project is uh, Bridge Street that's recently been completed. Completed, yep. Yes. That was great. And the third one is uh, drainage improvements uh, under a traffic safety program as opposed to a bridge program. And uh, for the town of Hoppington, it's Mechanic Street. Uh, and it's currently, uh, they have it listed as substantially completed and, uh, and under construction, non-prioritized. Okay. I know that these three uh, projects were recently reviewed by statewide planning and DOT, and they should be, uh, they should be rather current. Okay. So those are the three projects that were submitted uh, from 2009 to 2012. Our job is to make sure that they are completed if they're not completed, uh, we can continue them on the next 2013 to 2016 to make sure that they get done and then add the new ones 
uh, that uh, that we feel are needed. Okay, great. Thanks, Bill. Okay, we're all set on that. Okay. Uh, last you. public forum. Public's still gone. <laughs> they left us. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.